this story is quite a, a unique one, which I loved. Um, and it touches on the theme of loneliness and vulnerability as well. I mean, as a producer, I mean, you, you're obviously quite involved with it as well as being the, the, the lead. Um, where did this idea come from? John Stevenson, who wrote and directed and edited the film, um, came, stumbled across uh, Rent a Friend, which was an actual source material from the 80s. Um, where there was a guy in a sweater sitting in an armchair talking directly into the ca camera saying stuff like, you know, I, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I've been waiting for this for a long time and I just want to be your friend. And there's 42 minutes of this original tape and John, after watching it, he just, it, it just struck him and he started writing out the screenplay. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> After seeing the film and hearing that, that's actually quite freaky. <laughs> it is kind of freaky, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it was the best source material to prepare for a role like this because I had everything I needed. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, obviously, as I've just mentioned, you, you take on the leading role as well as producer. I mean, how easy is it to juggle those two hats? Um, you know, I was there more as um, the actor. You know, I, uh, I was there every day on set. And I think my job was just to kind of make sure that the spirits were lifted because we were talking about, you know, very sad stuff and lonely stuff and, and the mood could easily swirl uh, into a place that wouldn't be productive. So I think the things that I did was keep up morale, um, joke around with the crew. I would stay afterwards every day for dailies. Um, we watch the footage that we got from that day. And uh, I mean, that really is what I did um, on top of uh, the acting. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, that obviously the subject matter is quite dark at times. It's like, how, how do you manage to keep yourself out of getting too dark or going too deep? Yeah, you know, I, I've got good friends, so I would hang out, have a drink with my friends afterwards, you know, kind of shake David from me. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So the easiest thing for me to do is leave the character on set. Like, do not take a character like that home with you because it could just really screw up your personal life. Um, so largely, it was just shake him off of me. And it helped a lot because I had those very specific glasses. Um, when they would get my hair the right way, I would put on the clothes and, you know, there was David. So when I took that stuff off, I could come back to myself and not kind of stay in that dark place. But I, I had been going through some personal things in my life. So it was kind of great to work out the dark places within myself through David. And then it's kind of safe and healthy and I don't have to, you know, take that stuff with me afterwards. Yeah, so it's some kind of therapy. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely kind of therapy. You have to be careful with that as an actor, but I think you can also use it to your benefit. Okay, obviously um, the film couldn't come at a more perfect time, well, if you could call <sighs> it perfect, really. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, timing is everything. Exactly. People in lockdown, feeling isolated and lonely as well. I mean, in some way, it does mirror what's going on right now. I mean, you could, I mean, you obviously didn't see this coming. How long ago was this filmed? Uh, this was filmed at the end of 18 into the beginning of 19. So we wrapped, I think it was the beginning of February of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what happened was, you know, we had this really interesting story um, and when the pandemic hit, the film was done. It was, it was cut and it was ready to go. So we were able to get the film in front of people that maybe we wouldn't normally be able to get the film in front of, uh, given you know, the amounts of film out there. But we were a couple of months into a quarantine, so people, you know, uh, they needed content. So we were able to get the film seen by the right people. And I think the fact that the film, like you said, deals with isolation, uh, deals with loneliness. Uh, David is a caretaker, which I think a lot of people connect to, um, taking care of their parents and whatnot. And uh, the relationship with a screen. Uh, since we were in quarantine, we had screens all around us. So, you know, we had tablets and phones and TVs and, 
And I think there is something that is speaking to what people have just gone through, uh, that kind of David emulates, you know, all of those things together. It was just the timing sometimes. We just got lucky, to tell you the truth. Like we had a story that spoke to what people just went through. So it, it's a lucky timing issue, for sure. Definitely. Um, obviously, I mean, you have these conversations with Andy, who's paid by Will Wheaton via the TV. Was it a pre-recording or was Will Wheaton actually set in another part of the a studio? Yeah. So Will came in for one day um, and he knocked it out of the park. He was in a studio. They filmed all his stuff in one day. He came in prepped. He had choices. Uh, John worked with him on doing variances of the same lines so that they could use it over the course of the film as things slightly change in David's psyche. Um, and just the nicest guy in the world. So when they got that footage, I was doing a play at the time. We had taken a break from filming because they had to get Will's footage and I was opening a play. And then once they had his footage, they cut it together and sent it to me so that I could start rehearsing with him on a screen. Mm -hmm. So that when we came back for the last two weeks of shooting, uh, which was all the stuff with Will on a TV screen, they would manipulate that video so that it would work with the back and forth. So the the old TV was connected to a computer and they had that footage on there. And Jimmy, one of the producers, would queue up the scene and we would do it. And if I needed more time, he would pause it. He was like a puppet master. He was like manipulating Will Wheaton in a really strange way. Um, but it worked really well and it's what you end up seeing in the movie. Yeah, I was going to say that, obviously, if it was a pre-record, there's obviously, he's got that sinister face, but there's some certain times where he comes up close to the camera, where it's actually, I actually found it quite funny. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like when he goes in to, like, look at the room. Yeah. But he's yeah. got that perfect sinister face for it as well. I was like, well, obviously, you know, it, it, there was, you, you couldn't, what's the word? You couldn't, like, um, break down. Tell what to like him. Yeah, you already obviously had that rehearsal with him. Yes, I mean, and I got to meet him, which helped me a lot. You know, he's a really nice guy. Um, and I think because his performance is so interesting, which has both the side of like, you like him and you want to kind of be his friend. And at the same time, he's being manipulating and he's really kind of taken David, you know, in, within the story, the audience gets to decide ultimately what's going on but he's really kind of taking David on that journey. And his work is just amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously as well, the film is actually ste steeped in nostalgia with things like the videotape and your cassettes. Um, and it, it took me back to simpler times. <laughs> well, it feels like simpler times. Were there yeah. times where you felt like you'd been transported back in time? Absolutely. I mean, from before we started shooting. So we shot in the house that was right next door to the director's house. Mm -hmm. So production house was the director's house and we would walk right next door. Um, and everything that you see in the movie for the most part uh, was in the house. Mm -hmm. So the art team came in, rearranged stuff. The house had a smell to it. Mm -hmm. Like it smelled like my grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. It was so specific. So all I had to do was be in that place and I was totally transported because that's my era. I, I grew up, you know, with VHS and I would tape uh, movies off of HBO on the super long VHS and I watched them over and over and over. So, I mean, that was my era through and through. So to have cassette tapes again, to have VHS, I mean, it was very nostalgic for me as well. Yeah, it always helps when you're obviously playing these roles where you are playing them in the past as well to get you in the right frame of mind as well, I suppose. Uh, Absolutely. Um, okay, so a couple more questions for you. Um, sure. Has there ever been a time where you've caught yourself having a chat with the TV, you know, maybe come home drunk one night? Oh, you mean just in my own life? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always the times where you like yell at the TV because the character's making the bad choice that you're like, no, don't go in there. Of course, the killer's going to get you. You know, those kind of things. But I don't, I don't think... It was such a unique experience to be face to face with the TV screen 
and, and be interacting as if, you know, cause now we do it all the time, right? Now we zoom and I'm just talking to a screen, right? Which is the same thing essentially um, with that such unique thing where the, the answer is always the same, at least in the beginning of the movie, you know, I'm not going to give away too much what happens, but it, where David learns the tape so well that he can time his questions and answers to what's happening on the screen. I've never had an experience where I was face to face with the, the screen and trying to connect with, it was so unique. It was so unique. Yeah. So no, yeah, normally <laughs> I don't really talk to TVs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally, um, if you, if there's anyone in the world that you could have to be your very own rent a who would it be? Oh my gosh, alive or dead? Eva, yep, alive or dead. Who would be my rent a pal? That's a great question. I haven't gotten that before. Um, you know, I grew up watching uh, Robin Williams movies, mm -hmm. and he was one of my my heroes. Um, just the amount of energy he brought to every role and his stand up. I, I would love to have like Robin Williams be my rent a pal. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Although Will Wheaton, Will Wheaton is a great rental pal. <laughs> of course, you got to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's it from me today. Thank you very much for chatting to me. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yeah.